This meeting is being recorded. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm Stephanie Fisher with the Education Department at Michigan Bankers Association. Um, we're delighted to host you this morning for our webinar on ATM, ITM, vandalism, um, a discussion, um, important topic and, and uh, unfortunate at the same time. Um, but we're happy to co-sponsor this with Dolphin um, Debit Access this morning. So a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, we are recording as you just as you just heard. So I will send out that recording link for you to review or, or share. Um, we'd also like to make sure that you get your questions answered. So please be sure um, to use the chat feature or you can certainly ask verbal questions as well. Um, I think that is about it in regards to housekeeping. So um, I'd like to introduce our morning speakers today. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome Joe Woods, SVP, Marketing and Channel Partnerships. He is a 20-year veteran of the payments industry. His work has been published in various trade magazines, and he has spoken at conferences across the country. Joe's experience includes work with Corporate One FCU, as well as co-founding Legacy Member Services, a marketing and payment company. Cool. Um, Joe lives with his wife and three children in Central Ohio and joins us today from Nashville. Welcome, Joe. Um, our, our second speaker is Andy Hogue. He is director of ATM services and has been in the ATM industry for 24 years. He has served in various roles from technician, installer, ATM help desk associate, project manager, and director of operations. Andy has worked on both the banking side as well as the vendor side in his various roles and has a tremendous amount of knowledge and experience on ITMs. Andy joins us from Central Alabama, I believe. Is that correct, Andy? Correct. Welcome. I'll, I'll turn it over to you now. All right. Well, I appreciate it, Stephanie. Thanks so much. And thank you, everybody, for, for jumping on. I know this is not anyone's favorite uh, subject, uh, but we're happy to at least uh, give you some knowledge, explain you know, what we're seeing in the field, what's going on. Uh, what's happening out there? Uh, to, just to give you uh, some some background with us, you know, from a from a Dolphin Debit perspective, we're an ATM outsourcer. So what we do is we basically will take a community bank, you know, or a larger bank's fleet of ATMs, and basically make them our own. We'll operate them, we'll own them, and we'll operate them on behalf of the bank. Um, and I set that up for you simply to basically explain that, you know, when you talk about these vandalisms, uh, they're happening, uh, you know, in a lot of spots across the country. Uh, they really started in the Houston, Texas area, which is where our base is. So you can imagine, uh, you know, we grew up from Houston throughout Texas. We've had a ton of experience with these vandalism, vandalisms with ATMs that we've owned. Uh, so you're going to hear from uh, the experts in a field that nobody really wants to be an expert on. So uh, Andy and I have uh, been working diligently with a number of our clients going through this very process and trying to get, uh, figure out what's going on, how much cash was lost, uh, how fast can we put an ATM back into play for them. Uh, so there's just a lot of moving parts to this. And we're just wanting to share exactly what's going on, what you can do to prevent or what you can do to try to deter uh, the, the criminals from, from doing this to your ATMs. So we'll start off with the vulnerability you know as you can see here uh with uh the picture on the screen it's a it, it was an island atm now it's just a hunk of metal uh unfortunately uh but um this is happening uh we've uh, we're talking you know several hundreds uh if not in the, to the thousands of atms in this island setting uh that have suffered through uh, an attempted break-in or a successful break-in so, but let's talk about specifically what the specific vulnerability is, uh, because not all ATMs are getting hit, uh, and, and there are some reasons why. So, and when you think, you know, when I walk through this, think about your branches, think about maybe if you have some parking lot or retail uh, ATM locations, you know, some drive-up locations uh, out in the field uh, as we explain what's going on, and you can start to think about, about or pinpoint exactly where you have the vulnerability. So uh, this is, I won't say 100%, but we're talking 99.8% happening with island bunker style ATMs and ITMs. And by that, it's that self-contained ATM that sits on that pad. So it's not an ATM in a kiosk setting that is really a drive up through the wall ATM sticking out of the kiosk. It is actually that full functioning self-contained island bunker unit. Uh, that's where it's happening. So uh, the kiosks, although they're outside, you know, they can be vandalized, uh, 
the real reason they're not is because when you yank on that dispenser, it's not swinging those doors open. You know, you access the through the wall ATMs from the backside. So it really eliminates that vulnerability. So, and these are all, as you can see from pictures, these are all our, our ATMs <laughs> that you're going to see uh, in this presentation. So there's a bunch of them. So, uh, and here you can see somebody's pickup truck. Uh, so, you know, the perfect setup, you know, the Island ATM, as you can see here, um, one of the things is th they're typically hidden in the back of the lot simply because the criminals are looking for a dark spot to be able to conduct this, to get in, to get out. Uh, and they don't want to do it at the front of the road, you know, or on the street. Um, and in most cases, when you think of the way we've designed our branches over the years, we've put the drive up lanes in the back because you don't want them in the front. It doesn't look the greatest. It's, you know, you want that nice threshold, that vestibule that your clients, your customers, your card holders can walk into. You put the drive ups around back or on the side of the lot. Um, and that's part of the vulnerability. Now, one of the other situations is the ATM is usually located in the outside lane. And as you can see here with this truck, the truck is part of the reason why that that outside lane is critical, uh, because the truck needs to be able to pull up at a perpendicular angle and drive away. So typically, uh, in a lot of cases, there's plenty of room on the back side of the lot for that truck to drive away and yank those doors open. Now, if there's a fence back there, uh, if there's not a lot of room to run, you can see here, had this, uh, had this institution put a fence along that back line there, uh, right next to the, uh, the parking lot, uh, there wouldn't be any movement uh, availability for that truck to be able to yank as hard as it needs to yank to swing those doors open. Um, so there are definitely some things that you can do if you have a lot of open space at the back of that branch, consider putting some fencing up right away um, so that the trucks, you know, these guys are looking for quick hits. They're in and out in five, three to five minutes. Um, so they're going to pass by situations that they think are going to cause them, you know, a delay uh, because they want to get in and out before the criminals do. So uh, uh, obviously, you know, there's light traffic in the area. They're typically doing this at night. Um, so uh, there's not a lot of people around. Uh, like I said, they're in and out in three to five minutes. Uh, and that's pretty crazy. They actually, um, there has been video that shows them midway through uh, the act. They're still not into the vault. They can hear the sirens and they're still working because they know they have time. Uh, it's that much of a science to them at this point. They've done this so many times that they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly how much time they have. Uh, they're typically leaving the pickup truck behind. They've stolen the pickup truck. Um, so uh, they leave the pickup truck and the chain there. They're literally just running off with cassettes full of cash. They've got a driver around the corner. They run out, they jump in the car and they're gone. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, as you can imagine, you know, your head's probably already starting to think about the different branches and maybe it's even happened to you already. Uh, we've had a client in Michigan that's had two island ATMs uh, broken into at this point, uh, one successfully, one unsuccessfully. Uh, so to give you an idea uh, of what's happening now, this is an FBI report, uh, but this is based off of um, vandalisms in the Texas market. Uh, which is where we're based. Uh, and the FBI put out a report uh, on the number of vandalisms at the ATMs over the last couple of years. And as you can see, it's growing exponentially. Uh, so this isn't something that um, has always been around and now it's just hitting your market. Over the last couple of years, two to three years, this type of attack has really ramped up um, and is really hitting everybody. And we're seeing it now in pockets across the country. Unfortunately, it is happening in Michigan. Um, and there's a lot of open area. Uh, there are a ton of, you know, uh, boy, the, just the amount of community banks, even the larger banks, the number of I island ATMs in Michigan. Uh, there's a lot of green pasture for them uh, to really run and to really grab a lot of money. So I'm going to turn this over to Andy now. Um, so Andy, if you want to take it from here and then we'll take questions here in about three or four slides. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, obviously, uh, there's a there are tremendous cost that, that comes along with uh, these these vandalisms. Um, you know, your your cost of an ATM range is anywhere from thirty to ninety thousand um, dollars. Your your cash amounts are, are you know range from five to three hundred thousand. There's insurance. There's copays. Um, there's there's you know the the cost for the riggers to come out and remove the ATM. Uh, you know, a lot of times it happens over a weekend. We're, we're having to 
you know, scramble to get people out there. Um, you, you have a lot of downtime that's associated with this. Um, you know, your, your ATM is, uh, when we have vandalisms, it's not something that's just easily uh, repaired in a day or so. You know, you're looking at uh, best case scenario, 30 to 60 days, um, you know, to replace a machine. So you, you have a, a tremendous amount of impact to your customer base when these uh, attacks happen. Um, you know, it, it, it's causing the insurance costs to go up uh, because there have been so many of them and that they continue to increase. So uh, the cost of these um, just continues to rise. And, and um, you know, it, it's just a, a tremendous uh, cost for, for the bank uh, and, and, you know, us as, as well. So um, next slide, please. Um, so we operate, you know, 2,500 ATMs across the, uh, the U.S., um, mainly in the southwest and the southeast. Um, you know, it, it, we've seen, obviously, from Joe's slide earlier, an increase in 2019, but 2020 bringing even more. Um, you know, us personally at Dolphin, we had more than 50 uh, take place last year. Um, and as we've rounded the corner into 2022, we've already had um, quite a few uh, occur already um, in the first quarter. So uh, these continue to take place. Uh, initially, they were primarily located in Texas, uh, mainly in the Houston area, although they did migrate up towards Dallas and, and some of the the other uh, larger cities. Uh, they, there were some uh, concentrations over in Louisiana. And then as Joe has mentioned, it has begun to uh, crop up out in Michigan. So, um, you know, it, it is not isolated to any one area. You know, there, there's YouTube videos out there um, uh, on the internet that, that uh, demonstrate this, this attack happening. So people are learning about it. Um, you know, even a, a kind of side note, I understand that Lego has put out a, a bank robber kit that um, has a hook and chain, uh, uh, you know, uh, little Legos that you can put together. So um, it's something that's very prevalent in our society and, and very much, uh, you know, getting put out there for, for other people to see, which is unfortunate. So um, next slide, please, Joe. Um, there's been various different forms of uh, protection that have been investigated. Um, barriers were something that were uh, initially brought out at the very beginning. Um, they provided good protection for a period of time, but then the thieves figured out very quickly that they could take a torch um, or a plasma cutter and they could cut through the lock or the, the, the uh, barrier itself, and, and they were through that. Um, probably 90% of the time, the barrier is not alarmed, so that gives them an infinite amount of time to burn through that barrier and, and, and get into, uh, you know, past that barrier and, and towards the machine itself. Um, we looked at collars. Collars um, is what we are using currently um, across our fleet. It is the most effective um, way to protect your machine. We have not had one that has been breached um, in, in that, um, in the protection that it offers. Um, you know, obviously you want to have uh, good exterior lighting, uh, there's also been some uh, alarms and, and strobes, um, you know, audible alarms that, that are put out there. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, to Joe's point earlier, the thieves are undeterred um, by these alarms and these strobes uh, because they know that they have that three to five minute window to uh, perpetrate the, the crime. So, um, you know, the, the alarms going off, they're continuing to work and, and, and work their way into the machine. So, um, you know, it's uh, I'm looking at Sue's question here. Um, I don't I don't have that number right now. So Sue asked if the uh, ITMs are, are more uh, susceptible to this attack than the uh, the ATMs. Uh, I, I think it would be similar um, in that the ITMs design is going to be very similar um, as the ATM. Uh, the, the difference is that the, the ITMs have cameras. They have a little bit of uh, extra functionality within them, but the design overall is going to be the same. Now the difference is that the ITMs that that come out and any new ATMs that you purchase. You know, I think at the beginning of this year forward, come with a collar installed from the factory uh, that protect against this type of attack. So um, I don't see the ITMs as, as coming to the forefront as being more susceptible or, or uh, you know, uh, vulnerable to this type of crime. You're welcome. And I, I missed the other question. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Uh, yes, well, the, the picture of the collar will be on the next slide, and, I, and I'll explain that in detail here in just one second. Um, so, uh, you know, there's been some redesign of the branch drive through. Some of the other things that uh, you can do as well is, is put in a through the wall ATM in a kiosk out in the drive through. As Joe mentioned earlier, the through the wall ATMs are not vulnerable to this attack. The reason being is that the, 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 this attack is perpetrated by ripping the doors off the ATM. 
Um, on a through the wall machine, there are no holes in the door uh, for the thieves to get a toe hold or a foothold rather um, to, to perpetrate this attack. So uh, the, the dispenser exits out of the back of the chest on a through the wall machine and there is no uh, vulnerabilities in that part of the chest. It, it's, it's all fully welded and, and uh, very secure back there. So uh, those, those type of uh, machines are, are not being attacked because of that reason. Um, so we did generate our, I'm sorry, we reached out to an engineer and we um, contracted him to build us a collar of our own. There was, a, there's, there's a couple of different uh, dispensers that are prevalent in the uh, ATM industry for the Hyasung ATMs. There's a GCDU and an HCDU. Um, Hyasung, when they uh, introduced their protections against vandalism, uh, this type of vandalism, they only introduced protection for the HCDU dispensers, which are the newer style dispensers that are out there in the field. Um, they did not offer any type of protection for the GCDUs. Um, you know, we have quite a few GCDU dispensers still out there in the field. So we saw that there was a gap there and something that we needed to fill. So um, as I said, we, we reached out, we, we got an engineer to uh, uh, look at this and develop a, a collar, not only for the HCDU, but also the GCDU. Um, and, and we feel like it is a superior design um, over Hyasung's design. Um, number one, for the ease of install and, and for number two, because it reduces the clearances around the dispenser um, tremendously uh, over that of Hyasung. So uh, Joe, if you can go to the next slide, I think we can show them some pictures here of the, the collar. So this is a, uh, in the upper left corner is a picture of the collar installed. Um, so just for, for uh, everybody's uh, understanding when the top hat door and the fascia is closed, that collar is not visible to your customers. The customer is still going to see the same ATM, the, the same um, dispenser opening there. It is only something that is hidden behind the, uh, the scenes there. So um, as you can see, it slides in to the dispenser opening there in the bottom left. Um, and there's a compression fitting. There's, there's, it, it just, squeezes onto the dispenser. There's a back piece and a front piece and they go in. And what this does is it extends the opening further into the chest so that even if the if the thieves pry the dispenser back, they, they're not able to get a hook back in there far enough to grab the door. Um, so this, this adds a tremendous amount of time, uh, number one, in, in the amount of hardware that they have to bend and break out of the way to get um, back into the machine. And number two, like I said, it, it, it extends it so far that it's very difficult, if not impossible for them to uh, attach a hook inside the machine to rip the doors off. Um, so, and, and for those of you don't, that don't know, they hook a chain to the truck, they hook the, the other end of the chain's got a tow truck hook. They hook that inside the doors. They back all the way up to the doors of the machine and then they get a running start and they take off in four wheel drive and they, they jerk on that door until it pulls open. So when you remove that ability for that hook to grab into the door, you are taking away their, their, the, the whole you know, uh, methodology of the crime and, and, and prevents them from perpetrating it. So, um, but this is our uh, custom designed collar. As you can see, it is very tight. Uh, this dispenser, unfortunately, this photo has been uh, damaged in an attempt to get in, which they did not get in, I, I will note. Um, but uh, you can see on the left-hand side there, it is very, very tight around the dispenser so that there's very little room for them to even get a crowbar in there and pry very well. So um, it, it's a very good design um, in, in what we put together here. Um, next slide, Joe. And that's it. So, um, you know, I, we can open it up to any questions that anybody has. Um, happy to answer any and all questions that y'all have. So I will say while we're waiting for the um, some questions to come in, so the, the collar enhancements that uh, that have been made by the different manufacturers, um, for the most part, have worked. It's definitely dramatically increased um, the ability to thwart uh, the criminals. Uh, we have not seen anyone breach uh, the collar extension that we've designed. Uh, we actually worked with um, Euronet Worldwide, our, our parent organization. Uh, they actually have a head of security. And if you can imagine over in Europe, our parent company outsources about 50,000 ATMs for uh, community and regional banks throughout Europe uh, and Asia. Uh, so they deal with uh, this. They deal with explosives. There's a lot of different things from a security perspective that uh, that happen over in Europe and that um, haven't all gotten here yet, which is a good thing. Uh, so 
uh, we definitely uh, brought some of the best and brightest in to, to help design, and Andy was instrumental in that. Uh, so it's a, it's been a great uh, enhancement, a great piece. We're basically retrofitting all of our island ATMs with these uh, with these uh, different um, collar extensions to um, basically just to try to thwart the criminals. And I hate to say force them somewhere else, but you know obviously uh, we've got a lot invested in over 2,500 ATMs across the country. A lot of them are island ATMs, and we're uh, we're doing everything we can to protect them. Yeah, and I'll add one more thing there, Joe, too, as well. One, in addition to the collar, we are putting a sticker on the front of the machine um, that, that notifies the criminal that, hey, this ATM is equipped with a hook and chain blocker. Um, don't try to attack it because you, you won't be successful. So, um, you know, it, it may not thwart the initial attack, but once they begin to see that sticker and they have unsuccessful attacks, it will thwart them moving forward and, and make them realize, hey, these dolphin ATMs are, are not worth going after because we're not going to get into them. So it looks like we had a question come in. And, and that's, yeah, that's exactly what I was uh, saying. Yeah, so the, the signage does help, I think, um, in, in notifying. Like I said, you may have a few attacks initially, but once they realize that your fleet is protected by these and they, they will see these stickers everywhere where we put these collars, um, it will prevent... Um, future attacks because they will they will realize just so at the first glance that it's not worth their time. Yep. I think uh, our, our fear with that is that um, these stickers are going to go on to every ATM, whether it has the collar or not. So once the criminals realize that some of these stickers are, you know, false advertising and they still still are able to rip apart the ATM and get to the cash that the stickers won't mean as much in the future. Uh, they'll still attempt to get into the collar. And um, if they do have the collar extensions that, that we've built, that we've designed, you know, it might cause some damage to the ATM, uh, but it's not going to be a total loss and they're not going to be able to get to your cash. Uh, so that, that, that's really the key. Yeah, the verbiage on the, on the stickers is, uh, you know, this, this ATM is equipped with a uh, hook and chain deterrent. Um, I, I think it says don't try it. Um, on there. And then we also have it in, in um, uh, Spanish as well because of the, the attacks being primarily in the Texas area. There's a, a large, uh, you know, uh, population of, of Latino people there. So we wanted to make sure that, um, you know, we covered all the bases and that there was no uh, confusion there. You're welcome. Yeah, so, um, and let me click on your questions to make sure I get it all. Um, so that type of attack, we have not seen a lot. So that that's more of a lasso attack, Sue. Um, it, it is something that uh, in one of my previous uh, roles, uh, before I got to Dolphin Debit, that we were putting on every one of our machines. Um, basically what the thieves will do for everybody's benefit is they'll wrap a chain completely around the machine and they will try to unseat the machine, uh, pull it completely off of the island. Um, I think that that has not been as popular because it requires them to have some type of equipment to get that ATM into a vehicle to uh, transport it away from the site um, so that they have time to breach it. Um, you know, as we've seen with some of these hook and chain attacks, they will pull the machine um, over on its face. And at that point, if the doors were never breached, they've really um, kind of messed themselves up from getting into the safe. So um, that type of attack I have not seen since I've been at Dolphin. I've been here just over a year. Um, and, and I didn't see it tremendously in my previous two roles either, but it was, um, it will prevent, to, your, to answer your question, Sue, it will prevent um, a, a lasso attack, um, but it also requires that the side bollards be up close to the machine as well to protect from that as well. So um, it, it does limit that particular type of attack. As far as the hook and chain attack, though, it won't have any effect on it. Um, I'm not seeing any ATMs in it, and I want to uh, pull from the side. No, we're not seeing any pull from the side. They, they, in order to get the door open and to have the most leverage, they have to get a running start and shoot straight out. If they shoot off to the side, they're taking away some of that force that they're, they're able to um, put on those doors. So um, some of the things that I've seen some of the banks do is they, could, they place bollards across um, from the ATM over there, you know, in this per picture particularly, they would put them in the grass just on the other side of the curb there. Or um, if that's not uh, aesthetically pleasing, um, and it's not, um, you can place um, landscaping rocks. The, these large landscaping boulders really is what they are, and they will put those over there so that it prevents them from having that runway to get the running start and jerk those doors open. Yeah. 
Yeah, I brought up this picture again, um, Andy, just, you know, just for everybody to be able to look at it, because as you start to think through all of these things, you see kind of the perfect setup, you know, and this this island ATM here even had that, um, you know, had the arm bar, the security bar, and they, you know, they cut the lock. And like you said, they can get a plasma cutter, you know, which is going to chew through everything. It won't even chew through the lock. They'll just chew through the, you know, the middle of the bar to break it open. So it's, uh, it's amazing how fast they can, uh, they can make this happen in the middle of the night. You know, now if, if, if the security stickers start to thwart them, you know, you have to imagine these guys are casing, you know, every scenario. So they're driving by all of these island ATMs. They're driving through your branch drive throughs just to see if there's an opportunity. Um, you know, and at, at some point as these collars get on and as these stickers get placed where the collars are, if they start to see that sticker, well, they're just crossing it off their list, you know, and they're moving on to the next one because they know you've already, you know, uh, you've already invested in the upgrades to make sure that this won't happen again. Or you've outsourced and now it's no longer, you know, it's no longer your ATM. Any other questions coming in, Andy? I'm not seeing any, Joe. Okay. Stephanie, why don't we turn it back over to you? Thanks, gentlemen. Um, good information, scary as well. <laughs> um, appreciate your help and uh, and uh, spending spending uh, half an hour with us this morning. If anyone has any other questions, um, I'll send out uh, Andy and, and Joe's contact information and there it is on the screen as well. Um, with the recording. So look for that shortly. And uh, thanks again, gentlemen. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it, everybody. Thank you for your time.